a look at the Great Commission next. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled, Is Healing God's Will for All? The teaching in this series will remove all doubt about God's will to heal you. Learn how to receive the free gift of divine healing for yourself by ordering this new series. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are teaching a series on divine healing. Specifically, is healing the will of God for all? And this is really a launching pad. I've been able to get into all kinds of teachings and different areas on the subject of healing. I believe we've stayed on topic as far as it's all been about healing. But uh, the width and breadth of this subject is uh, almost limitless. And it's certainly something that people are more and more interested in uh, in today's world than maybe they were three or four years ago. So we, uh, we have a... a an unlimited supply of something that the world desperately needs and wants. And that is a great combination. So I'm going to go on in this teaching, and we're going to talk about Jesus and His uh, ministry, and then we're going to bring it all the way forward to today. And I think this is going to be helpful to you. It's going to be a, a neat journey, and it's going to show us the consistency of the healing message and the healing ministry in the church. So, uh, before we get started, I want to remind you to get our study notes for this series. Uh, go to my website and on the home page there, you can tap on the study note tab and look for he uh, Is Healing the Will of God for All? We also have the same series in audio and video. If you'd like that, go to the free download section. And you can download the MP3 audios or you can stream the videos. And we also have a bundle which I'll tell you about later if you like the hardware. If you want a, an actual USB in your hand, we have a package for you uh, that is devoted to this healing, um, this healing series. Let's go back to Luke chapter 7, and we closed with this in the last teaching. And it's, it says this, Luke chapter 7, verse 22. This is when John the Baptist was really, he was in prison and he was, he was in, in, a, in a real delicate state and he was wanting to, some proof that Jesus was the Messiah. And so his disciples went to Jesus and said, are you the one or, or do we look for someone else? Are you really the one? And, you know, people... People have that, that feeling today, I'm sure. There are people that have heard about God. They've heard about Jesus. They've heard the gospel. Maybe they're confused. They're trying different, uh, different religions or different philosophies. And, and, and Jesus is one of many uh, in their minds. And they're, maybe they're looking for the one. And John was looking for the one. But notice how Jesus proved his identity to John. This is telling. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Man, that is quite a testimony. You know, Jesus' ministry only lasted three and a half years. He only did these things for three and a half years. And he, I mean, he did it all. There wasn't any area of sickness, disease, or infirmity that Jesus' ministry didn't touch and cure. He was, went about, we read Acts 10, 38, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Healing was was a major part of Jesus' life and his ministry once he was filled with the Holy Spirit and went into the ministry. Healing was a major part of what he did. We see it again here in uh, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And then his fame went throughout all Syria 
And they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him. So Jesus' ministry was, was one of great power, many, many miracles, and lots of people. People are attracted to the power of God. They're attracted to, to miracles. So Jesus was only one man. He could only do this, you know, and he, he could only do it in one place at one time because he, he was a man. And uh, uh, like, like, uh, like everyone else, he couldn't be everywhere at once. He could only reach so many people that way. And, of course, he did it, and, and uh, we have the record of it. But he did some other things that are very interesting. In Matthew chapter 10, I want you to go there. Matthew 10, uh, in order to reach more people, verse 1, Matthew 10, 1, And when he had called his twelve disciples to, them, to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So, so Jesus multiplied himself, and he, he gave the same authority, the same mandate, the same power to his disciples that they would go out and do the same thing he was doing. So not only was healing part of his ministry, and, and the reason we bring this out is God's not saying through Jesus, look what I can do, look, look at all I can do. I'm Jesus, I'm the Messiah, and I heal people because I'm God, and uh, you should believe in me. That's not really what God is saying. Certainly the miracles and healings do testify to the fact that He's God, but it wasn't just limited to Him and His ministry. He's multiplied Himself now into the twelve, and He sent them out to, to preach and to heal the sick. And they did. They went out. Then, if you go to Luke chapter 10, in, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 1, it says, And after these things, the Lord appeared to 70 others also. In other words, He went from the 12, and now He's expanding it to 70 more. And, you know, the, it's, it's just a, a foretaste of things to come. This is a foreshadowing of the Great Commission. But it's so powerful that, that, that um, God's not saying only I can pray and heal the sick. Only I can do that. You need to have your faith solely in me. Of course, our faith is solely in Him. But He used other people to get the, the, the gospel out and to get the healing ministry to more people. And so it says, He appointed 70 others also, sent them out two by two before His face into every city and place where He Himself was about to go. And, uh, if, and if we go on over to verse 17, you can see the results um, of, their, of their ministry. Verse 17, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Now, they were commissioned to go out, and, um, and, and verse 9, it says, well, verse 8 says, Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Verse 9, And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. So, so they were commissioned by the Lord to go out and heal the sick, preach the gospel, and cast out devils, or he, they said when they came back, even the demons are subject to us. So they had a ministry that was very similar to the ministry of Jesus, and this is really before the resurrection. It's before the New Testament uh, church was birthed. These are disciples of Jesus under the Old Covenant, and yet because they were commissioned by Him, uh, to go out, they saw the same results. You know, it's easy for us to, to, to think about them and put them in this category all by themselves. If Jesus called 12 people and then 70 and he sat them down and said, look, I am going to give you the authority to go preach the gospel, heal the sick and cast out devils. I'm giving you that authority. We would expect that to work, wouldn't we? We would think, man, that, that is going to work. I mean, Jesus just, it would be like deputizing someone. Like you're the sheriff and you need a deputy. 
or you need a whole slew of deputies, like 70 or 80, and you could go and deputize them, and Jesus was doing this, you would expect that to work. And we know that it did work because when they came back, they were just thrilled. They, they weren't defeated. I mean, look at this. He sent them out. They didn't have any practice. They had no skill at this. They had no experience whatsoever. And he sent them out and said, go do what I'm doing. And, and you would think they would have gotten beat up and uh, lost their way, robbed maybe, uh, abused, persecuted. But when they came back, verse 17 says, they returned with joy. It must have worked. They must have been successful and they wouldn't have been full of joy. They must have seen the things that, that, they, that they'd seen him do. And they must have been experiencing the same results because they came back with joy. And you would expect that if Jesus himself had authorized them, you would expect that it to work in their lives. And it did. But notice this in Mark chapter 16. And we haven't, we haven't read this and gone here in this entire series. And so, but, but this, is, this updates us to today. Um, in verse 15, and he said to them, this is before he was uh, ascended, before he went back to heaven, after his resurrection, he's commissioning the church. He's turning this work over to, to his followers. And that includes us. We're part of this group. We are connected directly to this group of, of people uh, of, of uh, 500 who uh, saw him ascend when he ascended. We're connected to these people. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That sounds a whole lot like what he told the 12 and a whole lot like what he told the 70. Now he's telling us. Literally us, he's saying, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And so the difference now is that we can actually get people saved. They couldn't. They just announced that the kingdom of God has come in Jesus. They were announcing that the kingdom had come. Now we can, we can get people saved. So we preach the gospel. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons. That sounds exactly like what he told the 70 and what he told the 12, that, that they could go heal the sick. And they said, even the demons are subject to us through your name. Well, we should be saying the same thing. Verse 18, they'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is a commission just as real as what he gave to the 12, just as real as, as the one he gave to the 70, only this time it includes us. In fact, if you look back, and we will look in the book of Acts, after the disciples, his followers, were given this great commission, we call it, they went about doing these things. The book of Acts is that testimony, the record of the early church. After they received, The reason they were able to do the things they did in the book of Acts is not because they were the first generation of the church. It's not because they were holier than us. It's not because they had been with Jesus for three and a half years. The reason the early church was able to do the works of Jesus and see the miracles they saw, which are recorded in the book of Acts, is because of this great commission right here. It's not because of when they were born. It's not because of who they knew, but it's because of this commission. And this commission extends to us today. It is the Great Commission, and it's to every believer. Notice it says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. That works today. If you share the gospel with any person and they believe it, they, they are saved. We know that that's in force today, and we can go carry that out. Well, it went on to say that believers, these signs will follow those who believe talks about casting out devils, speaking in tongues. It talks about laying hands on the sick. It's the very same ministry that Jesus himself operated in, and it's been brought forward literally until today. You know, it starts out with preaching the gospel, and it ends with laying hands on the sick, and they'll recover. These are the bookends 
of the Great Commission, preaching the gospel and healing the sick. This is part and parcel of the gospel. This is the way Jesus carried out his ministry. It's the way his followers carried out their ministries. It's the way the early church carried out its ministry, and it's not, not changed. Now, the thing about the Great Commission is it's given to people, believers, us. It's not going to work by God alone. God does not carry out the Great Commission. The angels don't carry out the Great Commission. People do. And people are the ones that put this in. What if he'd have told the 70, go out and heal the sick and cast out devils, and they had all just sat around and waited for those things to happen? Well, nothing would have happened. What if they had not prayed for any of the sick people? Well, nobody would have gotten healed. Why? Because they were to go do those things. So my point is this. The reason we're not seeing some of this happen in today's world is because it's dependent on people to do it. If, if anybody's going to hear the gospel, somebody has to preach it. And when it's preached and, somebody, and people believe it, they're saved. The same is true with laying hands on the sick. Notice he didn't say preach the gospel and everything else will happen automatically. If you'll just preach the gospel or just think positive thoughts, there's going to be a lot of good things happen to a lot of people. No, he said you're going to have to cast out demons. That means you've got to do something. And you're going to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Well, if the gospel's not preached... People aren't going to be saved. And if hands aren't laid on the sick, people aren't going to be healed. We've done the first part of it, you know, fairly well. We've had a lot of help with the different, you know, streams in the church that have preached the gospel. But not, not, not as many people lay hands on the sick. And, and it's getting, uh, I'm sad to say, but it, probably less now than, than, than there was 20 years ago or 30 years ago. You're not having the healing ministry or the healing message preached, and you're not seeing the practice of laying hands on the sick. You know, we can change this. And, and when people start to lay hands on the sick, you're going to see healings. Just like when people preach the gospel, you see salvations. Man, if I was the devil, if I was the enemy, and I was trying to stop the church, I'd tell people that God doesn't heal today. I'd tell you, don't lay hands on the sick. It's not, it's not cool. It's not, a, it's not in vogue anymore. I mean, that's crazy. That's fringe. That's, that's going to offend people. You don't do that anymore. That's just coming right from the pit of hell. Jesus told us to preach the gospel. Jesus told us to lay hands on the sick. Jesus told us to cast out devils. The part of the Great Commission that will work in any generation or any church age is the part we use, that we practice. If we don't practice it, it's not going to work. So we don't, what we see today is, is not God changing his methods or changing his mind or withdrawing his healing power. That's not why we don't see mass healings today. It's not God at all. It's people. It's, it's the church. And as we begin to move back into these things, and we're going to, I'm going to, as we move back into these things, we're going to see results like they saw. What? It's the same Holy Spirit. Only what we have today is, is a whole generation of people that have no knowledge of these things. They, they didn't grow up in church. You know, their parents didn't grow up in church. you got a generation out here that's two or, three, uh, two or three generations removed from the church, church language, church experience, youth camps. Man, I saw lots and lots of teenagers in, in earlier years of my ministry, their lives were forever impacted by church camp, by the things that the Holy Spirit did in their lives. There, it, it, we've, we saw church camps where, where teenagers were all over the floor receiving powerful experiences with God. Some of them became ministers, missionaries, pastors. We saw a generation of people touched in those days. But we've got people now that have never had any exposure to that. They've never even heard of it. They've never been to a youth camp. They've never been to a powerful anointed service. And that has got to change. That is going 
to change for for my generation. If I have to, you know what? If I have to rent a, a hotel room, not a ballroom, just a hotel room, I am going to have meetings. If the churches don't want to have them, we're going to have them. We're going to have meetings where people come and they're going to hear the full gospel. Um, that I, I just know that's in our future. We can't let this generation uh, pass by without having an encounter with the power of God. Not just to hear about God, but to have an encounter with the power of God. Can I just, can I just tell you that? You know, all I'm trying to do is obey God. You know, I wanted to be an airplane pilot. When I was a kid, I wanted to grow up and fly airplanes, and I was headed toward college, and the Lord just totally interrupted my life. And since that time, I started preaching at 16. I'm just trying to obey God. And I'm not sure all the things that He wants to do in our ministry and in our future. I mean, you get glimpses of it and you have things that you want to see happen. But I'm not totally sure. But I am, I am going to make this commitment that when I do know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to obey God. And I, I'm going to appeal to you because we... Uh, We've kind of reached another ceiling in our ministry. We need to grow beyond this. We, we need to go further. I need to get on more outlets. I need to do more meetings. I want to do my own meetings, and all that costs money. I can't grow by myself. You know, I've done all the growing I can do by myself. I've taught, and we're, we're creating all this content. I can't grow anymore without partners, without donors, without givers. The first thing you could do is pray about helping us we're going to make another 100 episodes, and that's going to be $35,000. If you could give toward that, it would be a tremendous blessing and an encouragement to me. The last time we did this, many months ago, the money came in. And I have to be honest with you, I was shocked. I've never been a fundraiser. I, I've never done that. I've always traveled to churches, and, and they take the offering, and they give me what they want to give me, and I go to the next place. And so as I've begun to do this with my own audience, I've been shocked and surprised and humbled by the response that we've gotten. And I'm going to shamelessly, because I believe it's the right thing to do, I'm going to ask you again, pray about helping our ministry. I can't do it by myself, and I'm not supposed to. There are people out there that are called by God to partner with us, or at least to, to give us offerings to help pay for the vision and the uh, commission that God's given me. So if you'd pray about that, we've got many different ways to give. My website has got a donation page and a partner page. You can find a level of partnership that you're comfortable with. Commit for one year. And, um, and, and at that time, you know, we're not asking you for a lifetime commitment. Just commit uh, for a year and see what, if, you, if you enjoy it, if it does something for you, uh, if you feel like it's worth it. And then, then you move on. Or some of our partners will give a one-time gift that cover a year. So like a $50 a month partnership, if you give $600, that's a whole year's worth of giving, and you don't have to do it every month. And that, uh, Some people like that. We can charge your credit card automatically if, if you'd like that. Uh, we do that for some of our partners and our donors. Or you can text to give. That's a new method that we've, um, that we've offered, and uh, I encourage you, if you're a texter, if, you're, if you like to give by phone, uh, text this number and uh, help us with this next project. It's 855-511-5991. That is the text to give number, and we would love to hear from you today. We are constantly thinking of you, praying for you, preparing messages for you, and I'm telling you, this is just a foundation. We are laying the foundation. We've started all of these outreaches. We've got all the pipelines in place. I can create videos, audio, and books. I got the people in place to do it. We are ready to launch out and begin to do more meetings, get on more media outlets, and take this gospel to this generation. So if you want to get in on the ground floor or something, here we are. We are about to grow beyond where we've ever been before. And as I said, we've kind of reached another ceiling, but I don't believe we'll be here long because um, the, there's too many things coming together and, uh, and, the, and the pendulum's going to swing back. The world's going to want to hear what we have to say, gather in big groups and gather in public places 
and hear the gospel preached and see the power of God in demonstration. Wow, we've got a lot ahead of us, and I'm so glad to be able to live life and to run this race with you. And I promise you, as long as I have this program, I, I don't, I'm not going to use it to do a personal agenda or to try to manipulate people with gimmicks and scams. Everything I tell you is legitimate. It's sincere. And if I could pay for these things by myself, believe me, I would. The most uncomfortable thing I have to do in the, in the ministry is to take offerings and receive money from people, most of whom I've never met. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, just, it's just the way that God has created this thing to work. We are to do this together. And I'm getting, hopefully getting better at it. I say this all the time and I do mean it. I couldn't do this without you. And I wouldn't want to. Uh, it's just too powerful what we can do together. And, and the way we can receive the rewards together is a blessing from heaven. Thank you for being there. And you may, be, you may be part of my audience and you've never called in, you've never emailed, you've never given, and you're watching right now and maybe you wish you could do something but you can't. Let me just put you at ease. I am so glad you're there. This is all about you. We want to offer this program free of charge and we want it to go around the world. So if you're getting something out of this program, you just keep watching. And, and if, you, if you've received some of our free material and you think, well, I don't know if I should get it anymore, come get it. You can have everything free you want and get it as many times as you want. There are times, like just yesterday, we had like 15 downloads in a row. I thought, man, people are really hitting our website. And I look on there and it's the same person. <laughs> the same person downloaded 15 different study notes. I love that. That's what it's there for. So come visit our website, call us and let us know you're out there, that you like the program, and we're going to keep doing what we do and keep obeying God, and I'm going to give Him all the glory for anything and everything that we're able to accomplish. God bless you today. We're going to continue this teaching in our next program. You don't want to miss it. Until then, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Here it is, is healing God's will for you, the bundle. We have in this the audio and video of this entire series on a memory stick. And let me get it straight here. It's all on here, audio and video, plus the study notes. And we've also included this series, which is an audio series on healing, healing for all. All of these things are in this memory stick. You can find it on our website or call our helpline. We'd love to hear from you today. The teaching in this series will remove all doubt about God's will to heal you. Learn how to receive the free gift of divine healing for yourself by ordering this new series. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744. Well, listen, because it's those who hear that receive. It's those who hear. The Bible says, be careful how you listen. For to those who hear, more will be given. Isn't that an ingenious plan? If you have been encouraged by Greg Fritz Ministries, Please partner with us to reach more people with the good news of Jesus.